Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and today I'm here to do a reading vlog for Always Human, which came out on June 2nd. This actually started as a webcomic and then was moved into print, and I was given an e-arc of the print version. Full disclosure, I have actually read this before because I read it as a webcomic, and I mostly decided to do this vlog because I wanted to see what it looked like in print. Even though it's not in my hands, I wanted to see how it was going to look on the page. Because the way it was set up as a webcomic, there was a lot of free space between the these panels and I just kind of was curious to see how it would be shortened up. Plus I really liked the story the first time around and I wanted to see if there were any changes that I would notice and anything else like that so here we are. One of the things I also wanted to point out when getting an e-arc like this is that it is heavily watermarked. It's watermarked every inch and a half or so which is very distracting when you're reading something that is a visual medium. I completely understand why a publisher would do that because they don't want this type of stuff stolen and redistributed and people should pay for art and all that type of thing. It just makes reading this a little bit more difficult. And because this is a reading vlog and this is my experience of reading it, that was just something I wanted to point out. It is a comic set in the future at this point where people can very easily change what they look like and different things such as you automatically have sunscreen because you've got a modification for that, that type of thing. But some people have what's called Egan syndrome, which means that their body won't take modifications. So basically they live the way that we live. And if they have allergies, they have to deal with them. How we deal with having allergies and those types of things. This means that they have a more natural appearance and have to rely on cosmetics and that type of thing if they want to change their appearance. This is a female-female love story and it has to do a little bit with what it looks like when one person has a disability and one person doesn't and when they're dating and what can come up because of that and sometimes the person without the disability is just kind of a jackass without knowing they're being a jackass and those types of things. So. I'm going to read through this and I'm basically just going to turn the camera on every time I have something to talk about because that's how reading vlogs go, although it's very weird that I've set up my camera to do this reading vlog, but I'm reading this on my computer. It just made the most sense. You don't have to deal with my shaky cam. So I'm going to start now and I'll be back in a moment with more thoughts. So right from the get-go, we've got our main character and she sees this girl in the subway all the time and she always admires her because she never changes her look and she wishes she had the confidence to do that. And the girl sneezes and she offers her a hay fever mod and the girl just bursts into tears because she can't take mods because she has Egan syndrome and basically just leaves. Our main character is feeling very upset about making her upset and that type of thing. I feel like this was shortened for the page, but it's really hard to tell because I read this a few months ago and it might just be that I'm missing all of the different scrolling space that I was used to before. But what's most interesting is what our protagonist thought of as confidence is actually her just living her life and then when somebody points out that she has this difference, we see that she's not confident in it at all. Which can happen to anyone, especially if you're having a bad day. In the second chapter, our protagonist has gone home and basically asked her version of Google about if there are certain people that can't use mods because she doesn't know why this woman can't. And the internet basically tells her like if she's pregnant that could be it, if she's used too many in the last few days that she can't do more, and she's like no I don't think that's it. Are there some people that just can't use mods? And the internet responds with of course there is. There's people that have immune systems that are so well adept that they can't actually take the nanobots because they just kick the nanobots out basically, which is how all of this mod technology works. And this makes our protagonist like admire her even more and it's on this very thin line of like admiring people just for existing and that's something you see a lot with like inspiration porn with the disability community. But what I do like about this is her learning this aspect of this girl that she has a crush on and wanting to learn more about it. This chapter also ends with them seeing each other for the first time in about a week and the girl asking her for coffee so they can just talk about that embarrassing situation they had. In this chapter the girl from the platform is basically like, I'm really sorry I was stressed that day because I had an essay due and when I'm stressed I forget things like my hay fever tablets and then I take it out on poor people on the platform platform who just wanted to help me and I feel sorry for that. And our main character is just like, no, you have every right to be upset. Like, doctors can't help you in the same way that they can help other people. And we learn a little bit more about Egan's and the fact that doctors can give her certain mods, like really important mods, but it has to be done like strictly in the hospital. She has to be there for months. They have to like suppress her immune system to even take the mods. It's a big production. 
um, and that makes this character feel like she'll never be as pretty as our main character, and our main character just goes full, in, full on into, but you are pretty, and I've always thought you were pretty, and basically panics so quickly that she asks her out. And the girl's like, I don't even know your name, which is interesting because I've been talking about them without names because it hasn't told us their names yet. So Austin, the girl from the platform, is basically like, you don't even know me, why would you want to go on a date with me? And our protagonist is like, isn't that kind of the point of dates? And Understandably, Austin is feeling this panic of like, do you just want to get to know me because you're interested in my condition? Rightfully so, she's just making sure that she's not going to be looked down upon or like treated like this fascinating case because of her condition, which is such an important component of this story. So we just met Ray, who's Sonati's roommate, and they just had a big conversation about dating people and whether or not you should change yourself for people and how you shouldn't change yourself for people and how somebody wouldn't have said yes to going on a date with you knowing that you use mods if they thought that you using mods was a problem. I like seeing these types of conversations like this, especially in graphic novels, so you can see these people really working through these insecurities they have and coming out the other side with a better understanding of who they are, what they want, even though they want to please somebody else. So in this chapter, they're going on their first date. In the interest of keeping this spoiler free, I'm not going to keep updating at the end of every chapter just because I will give away spoilers that way and I want this to be spoiler free and everything I've kind of set up to this point isn't really a spoiler. But uh, I am just remembering how much I really enjoyed how these characters get to know each other and show each other who they are and the conversations they have. So I'm going to just keep reading and then I'm going to come back with some general thoughts in a little bit, uh, but nothing with spoilers. Just a brief update that I would be really interested in seeing any reviews or reactions to this webcomic or this book from people who have lived experience of having a disability and dating while having a disability specifically because I don't have one, at least not one that is recognized or diagnosed or anything like that. So it would be important for me to seek out that type of representation and that type of review, just because I can have an opinion on the conversations that are happening in this based on what I know about having disabilities, but it's very different than me actually having one and having lived experience with one. So if you happen to know anyone who has talked about this book that has a disability, please let me know. I only just remember that I'm supposed to be collecting some favorite quotes while I read this, and it's hard to do in this type of format because obviously pretty much everything you're reading is dialogue or very short things to contextualize a scene. But uh, one thing that I should definitely read out is you can't start a relationship by keeping secrets. That's not cool. That is very accurate. Thank you, Ray. Another quote I really like is, sometimes when I'm with her, the silliest things make me happy too. That's just super sweet and adorable and I like it a lot. I also just want to drop in to mention that there is some more rep in here. I obviously already said it's a female-female romance and they haven't said on the page how they identify, although I have a feeling that our protagonist is bi or pan. Her best friend is also ace and we've had a couple of non-binary characters. Oh, and unbeknownst to me, I was actually at the very end. Um, in the webcomics, it went further than this goes. But I also feel like that was probably the second season that I'm thinking of, so maybe they're doing a second season and I just don't know about it. But this is a sweet, cute comic. It's got some depth to it, which I really appreciate. It's got a few different types of rep, which obviously I appreciate. And I appreciate that the cartoonist, Ari North, is queer herself and believes in diversity and inclusion and all of those lovely things. So. That was my reading vlog. Again, it still feels really weird to be filming a reading vlog where I haven't really been holding the camera, moving the camera, all that type of thing, but at least the lighting has been good, I assume. I never really know until I look back on what I filmed. As I mentioned at the beginning, this book is out now, so if you're at all interested in it, I highly suggest checking it out. Have you read Always Human, or do you have a recommendation for me? Let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment, but wanna make sure that I know you are here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you're on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. That is linked down below, as well as my PayPal and my Amazon wishlist, in case you want to buy me a book. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!